Um, so look, the primary approvals were issued some time ago and what we're dealing with now is all of these subordinate approvals which, which are themselves a, a symptom of a dodgy approvals process. You should have all your I's dotted and T's crossed before you get an environmental authority but now the Black-Throated Finch Management Plan and the Groundwater Dependent Ecosystems Management Plan have to be approved before they can start box cut, before they can really get mining underway. Now the Black-Throated Finch Management Plan has already been approved by the state um, that happened sometime last week, despite the fact that less than a month before then uh, the state was very clear that they needed to do better work. Adani needed to go back and do better scientific work to demonstrate how and whether they could actually prevent the extinction of this species when they clear its best remaining habitat. They've now just backflipped on that um, without having, as I understand it, addressed any of the real, you know, the grave concerns that were raised by an expert review that underpinned that earlier position of the government. The Groundwater Dependent Ecosystems Management Plan, we're expecting that to be approved next week under this fast track timeline. Um, and uh, look, I mean, there's plenty of gaps in the science there too. We really risk losing the ancient and sacred Dungmabula Springs because they don't know where the water comes from. So, but irrespective of that, it looks like the government's hell-bent on giving these approvals now. Both the, both the report prepared by experts, so leading experts in uh, species, species recovery and um, ecological experts, uh, led by Brendan Wintle, they prepared a report that's been kept under wraps. We've asked for it, the government's refused to hand it over. Um, the final Black Throated Finch recovery plan, um, that also hasn't been released yet and the government won't hand it over. But it will have to be released at some point by Adani. They've, I think they've clearly taken all the wrong messages from the federal election outcome. They've, they've bought into this narrative that, that the ALP got got reamed in Queensland because they weren't supportive enough of Adani and they've allowed this narrative to persist that if we don't support Adani and more thermal coal then there won't be any region, regional jobs, like, which is clearly bollocks. You know, thermal coal is, uh, is a, you know, well under half, about a quarter of our thermal coal, uh, coal exports in Queensland are thermal. More than 90% of the royalties that come to the state from coal are coking coal, metallurgical coal exports. So. So it's this ridiculous narrative that they just didn't counter. And what they also didn't do is actually provide hope and alternative jobs for people in the regions. You know, accept, they didn't accept the reality that thermal coal is in terminal decline and that we actually need to provide alternatives. You know, tell a story that doesn't revolve around burning coal anymore. That's what they didn't do. First of all, the project itself has more barriers, right? They don't have insurance for the project. I understand they don't have a construction contractor all sorted out. They've talked about self-financing, but we don't know what that looks like. Is this guy really, is, you know, Mr Adani himself, is he going to throw good money after bad if this project really stacks up as poorly as many analysts have said? Um, they're still in court for their, the North Galilee Water Scheme project. They haven't got an approval for this pipeline they need to wash the coal. So they're not all the way there yet. Sure, they can start digging holes, but whether the project goes ahead is an entirely different question. And what's more, this, uh, this group of people isn't going away anytime soon. Now, this is a real flashpoint for the environment movement in Queensland and across the country. And we're not going to lie down. No, we've already seen plenty of direct action on this front, and I think any company that thinks they can charge ahead without getting plenty more of that sort of interruption from the community, needs their head read, frankly.